I'm Tom Flink, CEO of Sunlight.io. We have entered 2023 with the threat of a recession and significant layoffs across the tech industry. Meanwhile, IT organizations are expected to continue their pace of innovation with the same or fewer resources and show substantial ROI for their investments. Now, cloud migrations and centralization will remain a priority in this time. However, I believe edge computing will grow in importance as companies see the benefits of the edge and the disadvantages of cloud latency, cost, and geolocation. In my post on VM blog, I cover five trends that will shape the edge computing market this year. Consolidation, artificial intelligence, edge hardware, increased adoption, and finally, there will be winners and losers. The winners and losers over the next 18 to 24 months will define the next era of the digital revolution, despite a potential recession. One powered by cost initiatives, emerging technologies like AI, and infrastructure architectures that leverage the best the cloud has to offer while recognizing significant benefits at the edge. I wish you all a prosperous 2023. Thank you. Hello, my name is Yasmin and I'm the VP of product at Stormforge. I'm looking forward to sharing my predictions with you all. As we go into 2023 at a macroeconomic level, we'll be seeing a lot of uncertainty and we're already hearing from large organizations that they'll be revisiting their cloud budgets with an effort to reduce or curb spend. In the last few years, organizations have adopted cloud native technologies like Kubernetes at a large scale, and they're now dealing with the ramifications of that. The promises of speed and ease are met with the consequences of being over-provisioned and lacking efficiency since it's just so easy to request the resources you need at your fingertips. It makes it very easy for engineers to over-provision the resources they have. In the next year, companies will be looking internally at their cloud budgets and leading efforts to get more out of what they have. They will be forced with the trade-offs of reducing resource utilization while not compromising the promise of reliability and keeping uptime high. At large organizations who have scaled out Kubernetes, this is an impossible feat for humans to reason about, and organizations will look to machine learning to augment their practices and provide recommendations on how to be more efficient. Tactically, we'll see more FinOps practices helping companies find and fix their resource efficiency gaps. We'll see platform engineering teams using machine learning-based software to set configurations for infrastructure and utilize automation to deploy those configurations at scale. Teams will be a little hesitant at first uh, to challenge the status quo uh, in an effort to not risk reliability, but machine learning based tools combined with automation will allow organizations to get a sense over all of the configuration settings they have to deal with that become really, really difficult at scale. And this will allow them to reduce their costs while maintaining resiliency. Hello, I'm Brad Peterson, VP of Marketing at WorkSpot. WorkSpot is a cloud PC provider, and we deploy cloud PCs in any region of any major public cloud around the world in close proximity to the user for the best possible user experience. And what we've learned from our experiences in 2022 is that hyper-digital generations like the Millennials, Gen Z, and many others have found personal and professional value through a hybrid work experience. For organizations to be competitive in hiring, they'll need to provide these workers with the tools they need to do their job anywhere and anytime. And with that, we predict the following. Number one, IT budgets will be dominated by cloud services. With all the economic constraints organizations are seeing today, IT budgets are not likely to increase. This doesn't mean putting a halt to innovation or your next steps in digital transformation. To design IT budgets in the most cost-effective manner, leaders will need to align their businesses across three key influences, the corporate vision, the infrastructure, and the user. This will get the businesses and technology leaders working together in the boardroom as they transition from the data center to the cloud with the focus on the hybrid work experience. And number two, the future of the PC is in the cloud. As hybrid work is here to stay, we'll see even more employees and laptops working further away from the corporate office. So consider replacing physical PCs with cloud PCs, which includes all the apps and the data and the performance and security, 
although with none of the typical capital expenditures from theft, damage, repairs, or shipping. Cloud PC is future-proof end-user computing, preparing organizations for the next technological wave and the next set of business challenges. Number three, ransomware doesn't have to be devastating. So ransomware is costing organizations an average of $4.5 million a hit. But that doesn't account for one of the most financially devastating consequences once hit. 30 days on average of downtime without access to your business critical applications and downtime could cost you three to five times the ransom amount. Now, sure, you have cyber insurance and you've backed up your data. And yet when you're hit, all of your PCs are down too. So keep in mind, cloud PCs are deployed in an isolated environment in the cloud that can span multiple clouds and multiple cloud regions. So organizations can get back to work within an hour of an attack, reducing your stress level while negotiating the full recovery. In the coming year and beyond, there will be an increase in cloud solutions and cloud architecture adoption to strengthen security for the enterprise. And among the options available today, cloud PCs are at the forefront to secure end user computing. So look for cloud PC solutions that separate the control and the data planes and enforce the principle of least privilege for the strongest level of performance and security. On behalf of all of us at WorkSpot, I'd like to wish you and yours a very happy new year. Best of luck in 2023. Thank you. I hope you've had a great 2022 and are looking forward to 2023. My name is Mark Cassetta. I lead product as Chief Product Officer at Axiomatics. Um, as we think about predicting cybersecurity in 23 and, and, and some of the trends that are going to take place, I think we have to rewind the tape a little bit and think about the last couple of years and what's happened and, and really look at you know, what organizations have been faced with. And it's ultimately been probably one of the biggest tests of their zero trust strategy if they had one um, to date. And many organizations probably failed to achieve that test or failed to pass that test um, and just weren't ready for this reality that, that we're now, uh, now all um, operating in. And so what we've seen in the last couple of years has been a lot of, I'd say, reactive approaches to zero trust. Um, I believe 2023 is going to offer an opportunity for organizations to start to become a bit more proactive on zero trust. Um, the, the, the business case and need for it is there, of course. We're seeing some great uh, strategies and, and, and roadmaps being presented even from the USDOD in terms of tools to help organizations take that next step. So I believe 2023 is going to give organizations the opportunity to, to, be, to build more proactive and intentional zero trust strategies. Hi, I'm Donald Fisher, co-founder and CEO of Tidelift, with three predictions about open source software supply chain security for 2023. First, new participants will enter the conversation about open source software supply chain security. We expect additional regulators to come onto the landscape, especially in areas such as finance and critical infrastructure. Second, the conversation around software bills of material, or SBOMs, will continue to evolve as organizations move past building just a basic ingredients list for their applications and towards what they do with that ingredients list to actually drive security outcomes. And third, independent open source maintainers will begin to push back on some of the asks that are being made of them in concert with open source software supply chain security. Smart organizations will think ahead and explore new models for partnering with those independent open source maintainers to ensure the software they already rely on remains secure and resilient. Thank you and good luck in 2023. Hello everyone, I'm Tim DeWaren, Vice President of Solution Marketing at Infinera, and here are my three predictions for 2023. First, Industry collaboration and market trends will broaden open optical networking adoption to enable more choice, faster innovation, and improved economics for service providers. Echoes of the pandemic supply chain challenges are pushing service providers toward increased optical engine diversity to reduce risk and shorten delivery times. With increased industry maturity and collaboration with organizations like TIP, and OIF, adoption is becoming easier and more operationally consistent across vendor equipment. Second, governments will open their wallets to localize and diversify semiconductor manufacturing. 
While silicon-based semiconductors and fabs generally receive the media spotlight, less well-known is the role of optical semiconductors. Compound optical semiconductors, like those fabricated in Infinera's indium phosphide fab in California, are critical for the creation of high-density photonic integrated circuits for high-performance coherent optics. In 2023, look for governments to not only invest in local fabs for silicon semiconductors, but also compound semiconductors like indium phosphide that are absolutely critical to the future of optical transmission. Third, innovation in coherent pluggables will enable new opportunities. High performance pluggables with zero dBm transmit power and low out of band noise will enable coherent pluggable transceivers to cover a richer set of use cases, including deployment in the metro and across multiple cascaded rotums. Advances in intelligent pluggables management as being defined in the OpenXR forum will also ease operational complexity and enable support for advanced functionality like uh, remote diagnostics and spectrum analysis and do that inside of what we've traditionally thought of as non-optically aware hosts. In addition, a new class of coherent optical uh, engines will emerge with support for digital subcarrier technology that will enable a single hub optic to connect to multiple lower speed uh, leaf optics thus reducing equipment, uh, power, space, and total cost of ownership by over 70%. So that's a wrap for me. I wish you all a safe, healthy, happy, and prosperous 2023.